SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. Good morning, my name is Mark Bronski. I'm the laser production manager at Trump's facilities here in North America. We're standing right now in the largest laser manufacturing facility in North America. This is an 80,000 square foot facility called the Light Building. Light standing for laser innovation and technical excellence. And we have our facility here, which comprises of three different product lines. We are the only facility within the Trump Group that brings together three different kinds of lasers under one roof. Uh, we manufacture two different types of CO2 lasers. We manufacture solid state lasers, and then also have an extensive applications laboratory for our marking applications. As we'll go through, we'll take you through the different manufacturing steps of some of our lasers and give you an insight as to what makes a laser a laser. Our lasers start their, their assembly process in the clean room. And in the clean room, we're taking parts that are manufactured locally within our facility here in Farmington, as well as from other suppliers around the world. And the first step for these parts is to get a thorough washing. We have a uh, very extensive washing machine, which uses ultrasonic technology to clean our parts before they enter into the clean room. And once the parts enter the clean room, we have two separate production flow lines, one on either side of the clean room, which manufacture two different types of, laser, of CO2 resonators. The facility here is a class 10,000 clean room, which is something similar to what you might see in a, um, in a microchip manufacturing facility. This is done in order to ensure that no particles enter in into the resonators and cause any kind of contamination which might degrade customer performance at the end. Once the TrueFlow lasers come out of the clean room, we're assembling all of the different uh, electrodes that are required in order to bring energy into the resonator in order to excite the laser gases. And what you can see is the, the electrodes being installed on the gas tubes in order to excite the gas mixture that's traveling inside of the laser resonator. Here we have the resonator with the two end mirrors and we're adjusting the two end mirrors in order to obtain the optimal power levels and optimal mode shape from the resonator before it moves on to the next steps. What you see here is roughly 3,000 watts of laser power burning into an acrylic block to obtain a picture of how the laser beam looks like. We use this to evaluate if the laser is performing at its optimal characteristics and to decide if it can move on into the next step. Upon passing successfully through resonator alignment, the laser moves on to the next step where we're actually installing the life support system and monitoring system for the laser. All of these hoses, which have different sensors, flow sensors, um, as well as supply lines for water and gas, all of the things that the laser needs in order to monitor itself and to obtain the necessary uh, materials that it needs to function are assembled in this step. And worthy to note is that this type of a laser um, is powered in quotation marks by this uh, premix gas bottle, which allows a customer to operate on this one gas bottle for roughly a year at a time before the need to replace the bottle. After this step, once we have installed all of the hoses and electrical connections and sensors, the laser will move on into the final test step in order to go through its final testing runs before we ship it out to our customers. In the final test stations, we're assembling the telescopes onto the lasers, which will shape the beam into a form that we require for our applications. We'll go through an extensive testing period where we simulate extensive usage of the laser uh, with our customers' parameters. Um, this, will this process will take roughly two to three days and we will ship the machine if it passes all of its criteria over to our final end customer, which is one of our buildings next door. They will mount it on a laser cutting machine, or we can ship these lasers to uh, original equipment manufacturers, which just take our lasers and mount them into their specific machines or applications that they require. One of the most common applications for lasers these days is the laser marking of different materials. And different types of lasers can be used to mark different types of materials, from metals to plastic to glasses. And within the light building, we have an extensive applications laboratory with numerous marking lasers, of which one example is a TrueMark uh, 7000 series which we use in order to try out different customer applications. Customers send us different kinds of problems that they have and we figure out which kind of our laser is best suited in order to meet their applications. Adjacent to our applications laboratory, we have some examples of typical applications from our customers where we highlight some of the different materials that can be marked. And while many people don't really realize it, a lot of us come into contact with parts marked or manufactured by laser in our everyday lives. As soon as you select a radio station on your car radio, you're touching a button that was laser marked with a part. If you put on makeup in the morning, when you figure out what kind of makeup you put on, it's usually marked with a laser on the tubes. 
as well as medical applications where we identify the different kinds of parts which are placed um, in medical applications and sometimes inside the body to help us lead better lives.